Oh my god, I got it, I got it. <laughs> What's up, fam? We're doing something crazy awesome today. It's your boy Z Dog MD, Dr. Zubin This is Dr. Julia Nordgren. She is a pediatrician, she is an author. Boom. She is a chef. And she lives right here in the Bay Area. So today we're finally putting to use yes. this kitchen that we remodeled at great oh. mental and financial cost. <laughs> and what it was worth it. it yeah, I think it was, because what you guys are gonna see today is Julie's gonna teach me a complete heathen when it comes to cooking. Like my idea of cooking dinner for my family is here's the app, DoorDash, Ugh. Burger King. Impossible Burger. Let's try that. There's a sale. That that's my idea of cooking. And my wife cooks really well, but she does not have the patience or the love in her heart uh. to teach me how to do this. So, Julia, first of all, let, let 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 tell me how you got into cooking because you're a doctor. Yeah. How do you have time to do that? Well, here's the thing. So I have been a pediatrician for many years. I love kids. I love families. But as you know, this obesity epidemic, mm. it's really no joke. It's mm. no joke. And the kids that we're seeing are just not eating well. So I really felt like it was so important to have some skill and some, and I've always wanted to learn to cook. I mean, I grew up with, you know, eating out of boxes. My parents were divorced. Like I didn't have a great foundation to cook. So I decided to go to cooking school and learn how to throw it down. And I took a year off my medical practice at, at the CIA, CIA, CIA yes. son, Culinary <laughs> Institute of America. So you took a year off practice to I go did. to cooking. I did. And, and, and was that hard? How was that relative to medical school and on that kind of training? Well, what was hilarious about it is one of my friends said, are you going to have homework? I'm like, homework? It's cooking school. Well, lo and behold, we had <laughs> homework. We had exams. We had lectures. We had tests. And what's so funny is when you're sort of like, if you care about your grades and you're type A and you're doing your cuts and you're graded on your knife cuts, <laughs> I'll never forget. I'm like, how did I get a six? five on parsley how is this possible i nailed parsley <laughs> where's the judges bring them in bring here. It back. i think this is easily a seven and a half yeah <laughs> so, gunners yeah, gunners once, yeah. once a gunner always a always gunner. a gunner but i have to say it was great i mean once you're older and all of my i was the mature student i had a lot of really youthful amazing co-colleagues chefs now and it was just fun and amazing to really put aside the medical part of my life and to really engage in something creative. So if any of you are thinking about taking time off and really indulging that creative impulse, whatever it might be, writing, cooking, singing, do it. And Linda Ahia says, uh, <laughs> cooking is relaxing and a creative outlet for me. That's really what it oh, is. Oh, totally, I, totally. Is that why you wrote this book? Yeah. Which I'm shamelessly uh, calling. Yes, the book which you can buy on Amazon <laughs> on my website, drjuliacooks.com. <laughs> it really is just to, the most important message of this book is, it's important that we feed our kids. It's important that we eat at home. Oh yeah, that's very simple. This is nothing fancy. This is grilled corn, it's avocado, and cherry tomato. But this is a beautiful salad and it's so inviting and I really just encourage everybody to realize like you don't have to be a chef. You don't have to buy expensive ingredients. I mean, I'm gonna teach this Yahoo to cook today. <laughs> you know what? If we cook this, I will have the best BM ever. Because yes. That corn though. And that's what it's all about. Science. That's what it's all about. So what the microbiome. What are we cooking today? And we have comments streaming live. Awesome. We have about 500 people watching us. Right, welcome. We're gonna break the internet with me crying while chopping onions. Yes. So full disclosure, I don't know how to chop. If you tell me to cut an onion, I'll just be like, <laughs> and there'll be big chunks. All Your life's onions. about to change. Why is cutting important? In the so first cutting place? is important because the first thing is that I think what I try to do is you look at what are the barriers to cooking, mm. right? Why is DoorDash easier for you or less anxiety producing? If you don't feel confident knowing how to cook, how to put flavors together, how to approach this, onions are, they're intimidating, they're messy, they make you cry. There's a lot of things about cutting an onion, but it is elemental. Cutting an onion is just the foundation to developing good flavor. And so what I wanna do is help you really learn to approach this onion so that you're not intimidated, that you can start, and that it can be relaxing and meditative for you. Okay, listen, you punk. <laughs> I don't love you, okay? You and me are going down on this thing together and I'm gonna chop you up. And why, 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 so, 
Because what I notice when I try to cook, yeah. my cuts are all whack, everything's yeah. different sizes, yeah. and that affects the flavor and totally. the texture. Totally. So you're going to show me how to fix that. We're going to make them as even uh, as possible. And, and what are we making again today? So we're going to make some cauliflower tacos. Oh. And I, and I grew up, um, you know, the, the box, remember the old El Paso with like the, the sauce and the, and the flavor packet. We're you you mean the one where like, they're like, New York City, <laughs> get a rope, paste picante sauce, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna make it ourselves, we're gonna develop our own flavor. And the other thing is that anytime we cook at home, we have the opportunity to develop the flavor that we like, mm. that we enjoy. You know, in every family there's somebody who doesn't like spice, who loves spice, who doesn't like vegetables, who loves vegetables. We have the control to really give our family the nutrients they need in a way that's pleasing. And this isn't about paleo, it's not no, about keto, no, no, no. it's not about vegan, it's about finding the balance for your family that they're exactly. gonna eat that's healthy. And uh, Victoria is running the, sh the camera today. Everybody give it up for Victoria. <laughs> so if you hear me yell and scream, Victoria, show them this! That's what we're talking about. All right, how do we start? All right, so here, here's the problem that we have. We have something round that we wanna make square. A transformation, if you will. A transformation. Yes, like turning Culinary. water into wine or a gold. Yes, or a from grape lead. into wine. Or a grape into wine. So how do we transform okay. this onion? So the first thing we're gonna do is we just have to understand that onions are messy and we're gonna learn how to work with the quirks that they have, which is not unlike marriage in some ways. You know, everybody's got their stuff, everyone's mm. got their thing, and you just gotta learn okay. to love it. Yes. Okay. And how much does a knife matter? Because my parents' knives are so terrible. Yes. And yet somehow my mother manages to cut onions better than I ever will. Uh, but her knives are like, you have to, uh, yeah. I hate that. Pull a little, and then you end up in the ER without a finger. You do. Right? And that's, that's not good either. Which, by the way, there's a 70% chance <laughs> Z-Dog's going to lose a finger during this. We're going to so. do our best. Mm -hmm. What I want to show the audience is that part of what's really important is just making sure, and I, I really love somebody commented on making your, your, having this be a calm and meditative process. Just set yourself up for success. Mm. If you like listening to music, do it. If this is your chance to listen to a podcast, awesome. If you want to talk and debrief with your spouse or your kids, do it. The first thing you need, though, is a space that is clean and ready for you. So I've gotten each cutting boards, and I don't know if you saw me do this, but what I did, because he has this beautiful new countertop, but it's a little slick, and I don't want to start cutting my knife and be all over the place. Uh -huh. So I've moistened a paper towel here. Uh -huh. See that? Out. And it's a moist paper towel. I'm just going to put that right on my cutting board. And so then... Can you see that, Victor? So take, take a look. Yeah, so, so this is just a moist paper towel. Yeah. And I just popped that here because then my cutting board's not going to go anywhere. That's awesome. Because this was very slick. I noticed right away when I put my cutting board down, if as soon as I start to cut, it was going to zing off into uh, Victoria's lap, and that might not be. And the, by the way, this is her. Victoria right here. <laughs> Say hi. Hi, <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give this back to you. All right. There we go. All right. So we have our station. The other important things we have is our clean workspace. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this. You must wait. <laughs> so garlic. Mr. Garlic is going off to the side. Hello, Mr. Garlic. You're going to have to wait now. Do you, are, so are you, are you the type of pediatrician that obviously you don't wear a white coat? And you no. don't, yeah. What do you wear when you work? Um, well, trust not me, this I'm a shirt. Chef. Trust what? me, I'm a chef. Wait, trust oh, me. Trust me, I'm, I'm a doctor. doctor. That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I just this is casual, really. Yeah. I just keep it real. I'm just a, you know, I'm a mom. I do the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. we're all in this together. Heaven forbid that or, we yeah. actually realize that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all we all got the same purpose. Yep. Really Except do. for administrators. Okay. Uh, There's a special level of heck because <laughs> we're dealing with pediatric sensitivity here. Heck for you. I'm kidding. You guys are part of it. You're part of it. All right. I love you. Yes. Sort of. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we have our space. The other thing we have is a garbage bowl. And one thing that you asked me about cooking school and how hard it was. Yeah. We had to jam for hours and you could not waste steps. Mm. So one of the key things I've learned is being efficient and calm in the kitchen is not running around and chasing after everything. I know I'm gonna have onion peel to get rid of. I've got my bowl right here. I don't have to move, I don't have to go anywhere. I know I'm gonna to wanna to put my onion, my chopped onion in a beautiful clear bowl so that when we go cook, I know where it is. It's waiting for me. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah, that's awesome because often I'm running to like the garbage oh, you got this and, and that, the hands yeah. are all yucky and I'm constantly washing my hands, which yeah. is a waste of time. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I want to try to do is help you just find a little efficiency and comfort in your kitchen. A rhythm. Yeah. And by the way, if someone had asked, is this my kitchen? 
Yes, it's my kitchen. Check out the view, you I guys. I wish it were mine. Uh, no, uh, Julia has a better kitchen. Mine just happens to have uh, bells and whistles because we just uh, moved in. But um, yeah, so you, you find your space, you find your rhythm. Show me what's and, up. And, well, and if you ever want to do a cooking class here, if anybody's interested, let us know. Well, you know, I don't have enough stalkers that might yes, try to work. Yeah, that's order me. true. That's like, true. Let's, you know, we, yeah. should do, we should do a cla a cooking class for anti-vaxxers. Oh, we could. Where? We could. Yes. <laughs> or we could we could uh, bomb in on someone's house. We could like go in with coats and our superhero capes, and we could go in with our knives and our onions. Bring and, Victoria. Yeah. And just do a running gun. <laughs> yeah, like so a running gun. Style. Like we're here. You know we what? Could, that that's we a could thing. Bring, bring, crap out of the pantry. <laughs> anyway, we're going off the rails. Onion. Onion. Okay, okay, so the first step in making this, we do want them to be as even as possible. But you know what? This is not cooking school. It is not being graded. It is fine. Mm -hmm. We can have some uneven pieces. We're not gonna go crazy. And you always will with an onion. So mm -hmm. just accept that we're gonna make this as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. I've sharpened your knife. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank now you. holding your knife, show yes. me how you hold your knife. Uh, like this. Okay, <laughs> so what you wanna do is have, and then the right knife for you is the knife that feels solid and balanced in your hand. Mm. You have this beautiful space right here, that metal space where you can get your Underneath. finger under. Okay. Now this is gonna be a little new and different. Your grip might change and it's hard to deal with that at first, but these are the things that I want you to practice. Right. And your homework that I'm gonna give you after we go. Cause see, I'm used to holding a knife in a way that I can stab an intruder, yeah, yeah. possibly just, decapitate, uh, you know. Uh, that's uh, handy. Yeah. That, that's a handy skill. Okay. But we don't need but to decapitate Mr. Onion. He's, <laughs> What did I do to you? I did nothing to you. A lot, Mr. Onion, okay? My therapist tells me you hurt me. You made me cry when I was young. Uh, so, look, finger in this little notch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what you want to do is you really want your knife to be an extension of your hand. Mm. So you have a nice, smooth line. We're also going to practice not chopping so far away. Yeah, yeah, The whole yeah. leverage situation. Got it. You want to be nice and close. Okay. So we're you gave me a nice little cutting. thing. So I know, you've got your apron and everything, yeah. we're ready to rock. All right. The first thing to ever do with a round object that you're cutting is give it a flat surface. Oh, okay. All right, so then we're gonna, so we're gonna have to hold your fingers and mm -hmm. I want you to go all the way between, this is the root, you see that cute little root yeah. there? And that's the tip. Okay. We're gonna cut right through the middle. Okay. Oh, I did it, son! Very nice! <laughs> Nicely done! I'm already starting to cry. I know. But it's yeah. just because I'm emotional. Okay, so what you want to mm -hmm. do is take one half off. Mm -hmm. You're, take okay. it away. Alright. So what we're going to do is, you see how this root tip is connected to all of these things? Mm -hmm. We're going to utilize that as we're cutting. Okay. We're going to utilize that feature. So we're going to turn it over. Now we have a nice flat surface. And anytime you have debris, you can just feel free to pop it right up here into the cutting board. Ooh, into the poopy yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Yes. So you've got your little tip dude mm -hmm. and cut that off. And when you're cutting, you really don't want to hold your fingers like this. Uh, right? Because they're very vulnerable. Okay. So you've got to do this kooky thing called claw hand. Oh. What you want to do is you want to have ideally this be your guide to protect the beautiful tips of your fingers. So the knuckles. Yes, mm. so you don't want to ever cut like this. Okay. You want to protect them, pull them up, and do kooky claw hand. Again, muscle memory. Oh. Okay. Interesting, so okay. So it feels a little funny on an onion, but you, know, you'll get, you get used to it. Again, practice, practice, just like any skill. Okay, so we're going to cut off that tip. Okay. Now, Boom. right? Oops, claw okay. hand snitches. Yeah. Look at that. Claw mm -hmm. hand. It's, it's not so a stroke. Cute. It's cooking. All right. <laughs> this is not a contracture. This is That's me right. now. Oh, and look at it. Look at how beautifully this will peel off for me now. Oh wow! So just so grab. Just pull, pull the ends. Uh, oh, yep. I gotta get a little bit more there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Just pop that off. I broke it. It's okay. Am I done? No. <laughs> We're all right. You're in the game still. Okay. Okay. You're still in the game. Pull Keep that off. Pull that off. Bam. <laughs> Bam, bam, boom, okay. there we go. Look so that. now, look at this. Now look what we have. We have a beautiful cutting board. We have a clean onion ready to be chopped. We have this ready to go. Yes. We have our, I'm gonna teach you how to use these too. Oh, okay. Hey, well, yeah, I don't know what this is. So okay. this is gonna be the first and probably the most challenging. You might not be used to this cut. Yeah. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put horizontal slices through the onion. Yes. I'm scared. <laughs> All right. So, right, so you want to be careful. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the onion over close to the knife. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, close to the, to edge. the edge. Yep. And so then with your knife parallel to the cutting board, you are going to just draw it through. And this is why you need a sharp knife. Okay, so you see how I made these cuts? 
And you're not going all the way through. Not going all the way through because what's going to happen is that root end is going to hold everything together. So I'm going to put, I think three is good for me. You can do more, but you know. <laughs> this is hard. Oh, wow. You're doing awesome. And then one more? Yeah, one more, okay. one more. I'm kind of frightened that I'm gonna cut myself. Yep, so this is why you gotta practice and you have to just know that your hands are on top, putting pressure, holding this down. See, that's why we need a flat surface. Right. If this were round, we would cut our fingers off. Got it. Okay, so we have our horizontal cuts. Give your onion a turn like that. And I want you to go not all the way through. Remember, we're counting on this root yeah. to hold everything together. So the root keeps it intact. It's keeping uh -huh. it intact. Now, it's gonna fall away a little bit at the edge. We're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna accept that quirk of the onion. So I know I use this onion. I've used this knife to cut onion many times. So I'm just using. So I'm going to try to put even strokes down through my onion. See, without going all the way through. See, it's all being held together. Okay, so, so it's all still pretty still much together. Still together. And yeah. then a little, a few doodads there. Yeah. All right. So, so your turn. So same thing, but not going all the way through to the root. Yeah. So watch your thumb. Okay. So, so claw thumb, hand, everything. Claw hand. Yep. And just. There you go. See, the edge is a little weird. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome. Look wow, at that. Oh, this is kind of fun. Am I doing this right? You're doing this right. Perfect. So you see, you're always going to have a couple little stray dudes, and right. especially when you get to the edge, right? Because you don't have your done, your... Right, the okay. root is not. Yeah. So what you can do is move these little dudes to the uh, side, yeah, yeah. little rebels. There's always, there's a rebel in every onion. Mm -hmm. Julia, people are asking, what are you guys cooking? Oh. Question. Cauliflower tacos. Boom. Yes. Okay. We're going to make a beautiful version of a taco that's basically all vegetables and a lot of flavor and kids love it. So, and I'm so glad you asked, but don't forget, we start with our onion. Onion is canvas. Yep. Onion can become anything. We could be doing a curry. We could be doing, uh, it, there's no limit. How do you prevent the weeping that happens with the onion? Well, I don't find, are you I'm not, weeping? it's not happening. Why is that? Yeah, because we have nice, beautiful, fresh onions. We're well ventilated. Yeah. Often what I do is I turn on my vent hood. Right. And it just ventilates. It sucks it out. Yeah. yeah. And so don't forget, when we're, honestly, we have this, the interior, the vapors of the onion aren't exposed right now. So mm. we'll get a little more weepy in a moment. Moment. Excellent. But um, okay, so now what you've noticed, we've done cuts this way mm -hmm. and cuts this way. Our final cut is going to result in our even product. Ah, okay. Okay, so now we're going to go all the way through. Yep. And if you want to just watch, we're going to go. You see, because it's already been cut, you end up with a beautifully. Oh wow! Beautiful, perfectly diced. Onion. And so okay, so let me see if I understand. So the same <laughs> yeah, claw, claw hand, hand yeah. holding the knife right, yeah. and just. Oh my god! Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, dude, this is so awesome. Look at that. Oh my Look gosh! At that. I don't know what I did there. Yeah, but no, it's okay. It'll, 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 it it'll all come apart. It'll all come apart. Look at that beautiful Dude, diamond. Okay, onion. okay. Woo! This is the first time in my life I've properly cut an onion. My beautiful. wife has been like, can you cut this onion? It's and it's hard. just <laughs> This and is so great. That's, Thank that's, you. You know, and also in culinary school, you know, we don't want to waste anything. Right, so So you just, you just go you go to the rebels and you pick them up and you, you know. Okay, so you got that? Got it. Amazing. Ooh, now I'm weepy. Mm-hmm. So now here's where um, here's where your bench scraper comes in handy. Ah, okay, so CIA snitches. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move, and this is great when you're moving right to the pot or the pan. Having something like this, just pick it up. We're gonna put it right in our bowl. <laughs> so this gets our cutting board nice yes. and clean and ready to Ooh, rock and roll. It is a little oniony. It is. Yes. <laughs> There's so much horror in the world, Julia, <laughs> but also so much beauty. I know. <laughs> I predict an ER visit in your future, says Sean Kopchu. You know, <laughs> not the way she's teaching me. You're doing great. She's, so remember, she's... it's that claw hand. It's a little weird, but it works. You know, so here's an interesting thing. So Sarah Wood says, don't throw away the onion peels and veggie ends. Oh. Put them in a Ziploc baggie and keep them in the freezer. Then in the fall and winter, you have lots of leftover veggies to make broths with. You throw away the veggies after you're done making broth anyways. Might as well throw away the veggies you weren't going to eat and bring on the flu season, y'all. Y'all, thank you. Thank you. Like She's that. absolutely right. And actually, I would, I would do that at home. I have one that I put all just this material. She's absolutely right. You take this up. This actually is what makes chicken stock this beautiful color. Really? Yes. You do the, the onion so the skin. Peel. Wow. Yes. The peel is what gives the 
a beautiful chicken broth when you put you don't ever put you don't put chopped onion to make your stock. See, people are like the CIA doesn't have secrets. That's oh, a secret, that's people. A secret. That's a CIA yeah, and secret. Especially when you grill it a little bit. Okay, oh. but she's absolutely right. So we could take this and all of this. So it's so true. Yeah, the cooking school. You don't waste anything. Mm. Everything goes to another product. So mm. this would all be used for stock. All of my beautiful. Um, the carrot tops, that would all go to stock. Stems, this is cilantro, whoop, ah! The real carrot top in Las Vegas is also largely chicken stock. Is that right? Yeah, but that's a whole nother discussion. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. All right, so we've got our onion, and now we're gonna do uh, some garlic. Okay. Do you like garlic? Or? I love it. Okay. Um, mm. And it's great for firing up a Dutch oven at night, if yeah. you guys know what I mean. Anyway, uh -huh. so the garlic, how does this yeah. work? Yeah, all right, so what I'm gonna do, so everything has a quirk, garlic is sticky. Mm. Garlic has this irritating little skin around it. It's fine. So just know, have your garbage bowl handy. So again, and this is perfect for stock as well. So we would put all of our little, and what we gotta do is we gotta get this out efficiently, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is injury prevention time. Okay, yeah, I need okay. that. Okay, we're gonna be very careful not to hurt our hands on this, but we're mm. gonna do a smash maneuver. Which okay. It's gonna be super fun and rewarding. Do I need to take this little bits of Junk yep, off so what we're, no, gotta no, leave that there. Leave so okay. the reason for the smash maneuver is we're gonna end up pulling all that off. Oh, That's okay. gonna, what's gonna pop it out of the skin. Got okay. it. Okay, so put it on as flat a surface as possible. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use this part of our knife and the palm of our hand, we're just gonna <laughs> Wow, so how do I not cut myself on the edge of the knife? So you don't put I mean, the knife up like that, you right? Make it <laughs> like that? Yeah. So then, did I do enough? Oh, you'll see. Yeah, that should pop off pretty it. easily. Oh wow! Yeah. So that's oh, cool. Yeah. So that's how you get the garlic peel off. Oh sweet. Yeah. Okay. So and now, so, that, so you see what used to be anxiety producing is and now, challenging is now calming and enjoyable and, and delicious smelling and delicious, Ooh. right? And that's why you sort of do your garlic last because it it, is, it has it's a sticky and stinky. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. So now you can do it a few different ways. I just like to slice it. So see how I'm using this part of my knife, just the just the back. Yeah, uh -huh. close to my hand. I'm using claw hand, so I don't I don't cut my finger off, and I'm just gonna run my knife through it a few times. This is beautiful minced garlic. <laughs> Not quite as facile as That's you okay. are. That's okay. Get there, right? It. It's a lot of practice. You know. They say pediatricians don't do procedures. I uh, tell you, we do them on the daily. Yeah. And one thing that's really important to talk about is, um, you know, is, it's, it's family. It's all about family. And, and I don't want to be too racy, but really what this boils down to is sex. What? Okay, now it's getting interesting. <laughs> I mean, you said that your wife would like you to cook more. Yes. And my guess is that if you were to cook a little more, make her some beautiful homemade food, have her come home and have the house smelling beautiful and dinner ready, I'm just saying that that could be an enhancement to your life. You know what? Just you, saying. You had me at sex, <laughs> uh, and now I'm still completely sold. And you know, now my wife is like at Stanford every day working, Right. comes home late, I'll door dash something on the days that she's working. And if I could actually make something, you're saying that there's a good, better chance that, you know. I'm just saying that the appreciation, the love that grows in her heart when she walks in and you've created a beautiful dinner for her and it smells amazing and it's from the heart. Mm. I'm just saying your chances of getting lucky are maybe just ever so slightly higher. Yeah, because I'm telling you, with the uh, with the Whopper, it didn't work. It's not, no, yeah, no, it didn't the work. Whopper doesn't usually work. No, you add cheese, there's more chance. Yeah. But yeah. I tell, actually, I tell my kids, you have two boys, they're teenagers, and I, I literally say this to them, any bozo can door dash. It takes a special guy. I said, I want, on your first date, I don't care if you like a man, a woman, someone in between, it doesn't matter, but I want you on your first date to say, hey, can I cook for you? Oh. What do you like? Wow. That's a relationship starter That's right there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then when the person says, chilled monkey brains, <laughs> then you have then to you're really a, in trouble. You're ready to step up. Yeah. yeah. But imagine that, you know, imagine someone, you know, like I'm thinking of you, that's a thoughtful effort. Anybody mm. can order something, mm. but if you can come over and it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be an effort. Ah, I love it. So that's, that's what I really beautiful. try to impress upon my kids. Connection. Yes. It's yeah. all about connection. It's yep. all about connection. Yep. So now, right. now what do I do? Okay. With so what we're yeah. going to do, let's grab, if you don't mind, we'll just reach mm. in here. Because I'm going to teach you about cooking garlic and onions, mm -hmm. and um, 
Here, I'm gonna use, oh, here's your bench scraper. We're gonna do this here. Okay, so we've got our garlic. Wow. We're ready to go. So, oh, a different bowl. Yeah, uh, here, put it in this bowl. We'll oh, put sure, all our sure, garlic sure. together. Okay. My wacky right. garlic in your I think we're, um, we're ready to do our cauliflower. Awesome. Okay, our cauliflower is gonna go in this beautiful bowl. Now, cauliflower is amazing. So there's a few different ways to do cauliflower. And one of the things, have you seen the riced cauliflower? Yeah. So that's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love having it pre-prepped. That's a great, that's money well saved. Right, 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 right. It's not hard to do, but it's a mess. It's a mess. It's right, a mess. It's right. a fuss. So cauliflower, a brassica. What I love about cauliflower is pretty neutral in flavor. You can really make it what you want it to be. And it's full of fiber, it's full of phytochemicals. I mean, this is just a beautiful vegetable to get to love. Delicious if you do not too. love the cauliflower, I wanna help you love the cauliflower. Do you love the cauliflower? I love cauliflower. All right, here we go, <laughs> glad to hear it. So the way I approach it, so what you gotta do is there's some parts that are not edible that you have to get rid of. And also the shape and the si size does matter. So the shape and the size will impact because you do want it to cook evenly. Yeah, this is a PG-13 show. So, the sex is and size and <laughs> Listen, these, not, these things, I'm, what is going on? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> this is what happens when two doctors get together and cook. Listen, I, yeah, yeah, well, Ron was talking about the, uh, the carrot, yep. uh, the vegetables with... Um, That's right, Ron said how when you yes. yep, yep. So we're going to... Um, make this cauliflower into something beautiful and delicious. I can't wait. It doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own, and some people don't like it because it's bitter. It's also very cruciferous. It has a lot of fiber, mm. which is very good for the microbiome, as mm. we know. Slowing so, digestion, slowing the absorption of yeah. sugars, making you feel full. So we, I will do two different techniques to show your audience. So let's there's do a couple it. different ways. So let's just chop this bad boy in half. Again, mm. round thing. Let's make a... Flat thing. A flat surface. I can be taught. Yes, you can be so taught. Just right down the middle. Yeah, right down the middle. All so right. see. Let's see. And already. Oh yeah. Nice. Very well. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> so now you see oh. is then we, we're just gonna pull off. We're gonna pull off the ends. And again, this could be perfect for a stock. So just yank them off. Yeah, just yank it off. I find it easier just to get your thumb in there. Oh, Use the hands. The muscles for it. Okay. So. If we're roasting, and what we decided to do is since we have a lot of cauliflower, we're just going to roast off some cauliflower too because we're here. Mm. And that's another thing I like to do when I'm cooking is I think ahead, like, instead of putting this away, I'll, oh, what, uh, can I just make something now and then it's ready for me for lunch the next day? I'm always thinking like that. Right. Just, I have two boys and, you know, they're going to get hungry, so i got to be ready. Two boys and little time. Two boys, little time, a job. Yep. And you know, at work too, I don't, and I'm sure this is true for your wife, like when you're seeing patients, you don't always have time where you know you're gonna take a break. Right. I have to be ready. I right. have to be dialed up and ready for myself to get hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I can't be up and down with the blood sugars all day. Yeah. I can't even deal with that, so. All right. I'm with you. Okay, so we got these beautiful mm -hmm. hemisected, that's right. Hemisected. Hemisected right. cauliflowers. It's almost like a corpus callosotomy, where the human brain has now been Right. Each is independently conscious. What will the right decide? What will the left decide? Nobody knows. That's the magic of human consciousness. That's right. I brought cooking into consciousness. Cooking, you know, science and cooking. Science. Okay. All right. So what we would do if we were just going to do some roasting, if we wanted to keep this larger, is we would just go in and find the spaces between florets. How did you even get to that point? What did you oh. do there? Yeah. Oh, just put your knife through it. Just... Do Just a quarter. Do it like yeah. here? Or what, but careful, okay, put, yeah, your, put your yeah. flat side down. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. And now just put that, make a quarter out of that. There doesn't have to be any line or... No, no, just, so just right, right through the right middle. middle. Okay. Okay, and then? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what you want to do is, so this is very fibrous and, and almost inedible. Okay. So you just want to cut maybe that heart of it out. So just kind of use the tip of the knife? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay, let me get my claw hand. Yep, so you were saying this, but I was thinking about the nature of consciousness. I know. All right, so there we it's go. There's a lot to think about. Yes, okay. now we've got that. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So then, so yeah, so you can see here, and oh, and you're always going to have these dudes flying around. Do you know what I call these guys? Delicious doodads. Oh. So don't be worried about those. Let them do their mm -hmm. thing. So if we were just doing a roasted cauliflower, I might take this guy down a little bit. So make them all just similar size because that's really important for your cooking time. Got it. I actually don't mind if they're a little uneven. I've got some that are going to crisp up really nicely. Mm. Um, and some, so that's what we would do, you know, if we're going to roast some cauliflower, which we will. 
So let's put the let's put the bigger dudes, you know, we'll just kind of put those aside for now. And then what I want to show you is what we're going to do for, do you want these to be smaller? Yeah, so. Okay, yeah, just reach your tip, uh -huh, yep, like reach that? your tip, yeah, perfect. Oh, and then, okay. Yeah, and you can turn it over now. Uh -huh. So you see how you have this beautiful flat surface? Put it, put it down yeah, flat. Yeah, put it down flat, and then you can, there you go. I love that, that usually I'm cutting down here at the bottom, but this is a really good tip of the knife thing. Got it. Got it? And so is this is this the size you want? Yeah, yeah, oh, perfect, nice. so we're good. Yeah, so this might be a little big, little big. cut them down. So we'll cut them down, yeah. so let's find. Uh, tissue plane, and we will. That's right. Yep, exactly. We all will, in the fascia. Bisect it down the fascial plane. You should have seen me uh, when we were we're doing the uh, chickens. I was like, oh my god, I didn't realize the chicken kidneys were like that. Right? <laughs> yes. They're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so nuts. Anatomy. It's all anatomy. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do now is we because we're going to do a taco preparation, we're going to make this a little like rice. There's a couple ways to do it. And if you can see if I reach over, you, I'm mm -hmm. going to grab. This is just. A very underutilized, this is a very inexpensive workhorse in the kitchen, your box grater. Mm. So you can do, you can just grate it down on your box grater. So you can, again, you're going to have all these little doodads flying around. That's cool. That's fine. We're ready for that. So you see how you have this really nice texture. So you can do it that way to get it nice and fine. And if you want to experiment with that, you can do that. Or if you want to use your knife, oh, I got it, got it all messy in my hands. I'm such a clean freak. Like this freaks me out. How do you clean oh, up yeah. afterwards? Oh, don't worry. Do you have a dog? No. no. I have a yeah. cat. And she'll throw this stuff up somewhere yeah. else. There we go. Yeah, oh, so cool. that's that's the problem with cauliflowers. It is messy. So you can do the um and I like it a little bit bigger for tacos. Mm -hmm. So we can just do some um we can just do some cutting it down. And let's take that other bowl for our smaller cauliflower. So what I'll do is we'll, we can actually just mix this all together. Even mm -hmm. though it's different sizes, it's going to cook up really nice. Is this okay? Yeah, perfect. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to get this. So in cooking school, you waste nothing. Yeah, we really try our best. All these little bits. Yeah, I see. yeah all the little bits. And so that's why actually the bench scraper is really nice. I, my cutting board at home is like this. It's yeah, much bigger, so I don't have a lot of flyaways like we're right. having right now. Right. Um, so why don't you go ahead and grab your knife and just cut, you know, just do some chopping. Practice your claw hand. Claw oh, hand. Like, uh... So sometimes I like to do slices and then turn, make it a little grid. And then to get it down further, you just run your knife through. Try to go super fast like you <laughs> cut off Someday, yeah. cut off my claw. Yeah. And right now to do the run through, I've got my knife balanced under my the tops of my fingers. Oh, so like this. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah, there you go. Watch your thumb. Yeah. <laughs> the thumb is sticking thumb right a little out out there. under the thing. Yeah. Man, this is this is more like my style of messing up the Yeah. Chocolate. There we go. Okay. Ooh. But we also learned, you know, cooking school is really important to clean as you go. Clean mm -hmm. as you go. Mm -hmm. You not have a messy Station. Yeah. Do they like do that. they ding you if, if Oh totally. Yeah. Yes. The, the good stuff. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little more. Mm -hmm. so. Let me read some comments while you're chopping. Oh yeah, please. So what kind of surgery is this, Christy Bird? <laughs> the delicious kind. The delicious um, surgery. Supporter uh, Linda says, Great, I'll never again have a cauliflower without thinking about brain hemispheres. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Peter Carvillian, supporter. You need to practice copying, uh, coping flour until it's fine. Ooh, that sounds Ooh. Uh, that sounds like a lot of work, but I'm I'm down with it. But you know the glutens, Peter. The glutens. All right. <laughs> uh, Frederick Grant Greenwood says yes. Cooking together uh, for one another is important. Too much chat. Get to the food and <laughs> post the recipe <laughs> and info about the nutrition. <laughs> I told you I have the gift again. Yeah, Sorry. me too. Uh, Let's see. There's some nom nom noms going around. Love All cauliflowers. Right. All right. All right. Whoops. Sorry, I just dropped a cauliflower on your floor. Hey, Logan Stewart tuned in. Logan, are you watching? Okay. Because <laughs> this is going to change your life. That's the idea. All right. So, why don't you go ahead and let's, let's put our fire on. Let's get going. All right. Enough with the gab. Dude, so here? Yes. What, uh, what, how, what, where? How, so, what? So lost. Okay. All right, well, we'll do this. Let's get our cauliflower all set up. So again, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get everything ready for us. And 
You could you know, spend more time making it fine, but again, this is home cooking. This is showing technique. It does not have to be perfect, people. Mm. Okay. So we have onions, garlic, yep. cauliflower, chopped. Yep. And so uh, the other thing that's really important to do is train your kids to help. So right mm -hmm. now, I'd be like, hey, can you come in and get this all swept up? Right, right, kids right, really right, need right, to right. learn. Right. Okay, so can you get right. turn on the fire for me? Yep. Which one here? Let's see which does what. Right, I'm just going to wipe up the cauliflower so we don't have to. Oh, I can help you with that. So, all right, so we have a flame going on what, high? Okay, yeah, let's start with a nice medium high. Mm -hmm. Medium high. Okay. What do you think of my stove, fam? Huh? <laughs> no formal training. Okay, so we have our onion, we have our cauliflower, and let's get our garlic. Okay, we have my two favorite flavors. We've got our smoked paprika. Mm. Can we use this? I have, yeah. We use it for smell? chicken. Oh, oh smoky uh, and paprika-y, both. So, um, to recreate that um, flavor profile without all the MSG, mm. These are my go-to. The I love Rancho Gordo. They make amazing heirloom beans. So if you get an opportunity um, to try out, they have beautiful, beautiful beans. They're um, they do heirloom beans they grow in in Napa. We awesome. went there on our field trip. Oh, nice for cooking school. Yeah, the CIA's up there. Yeah. yeah. So what I want to introduce you to, if you don't use it already, is I really have fallen in love with avocado oil for sautéing. The reason is it has a very high smoke point. I love that. That's you can get that at Costco. Yeah. The chosen foods one. Yeah. So, so yeah. smoke point meaning like you can go like 550 degrees without it. Exactly. Smoking. Yeah. So I'm giving it. A, I'm gonna have a nice layer of oil here, and we're gonna do a big batch. So we're gonna just get this nice and heated up. So you want to heat your oil. You don't want to put anything in cold oil. So you want to get that nice and hot before we start adding things to it. Mm. So um, we're gonna make this kitchen smell amazing. I love it. Soon. Should we run a little uh, ventilation or not? Uh, not yet. Let's leave it. Yeah, yeah, let's wait if we can. Yeah, that would right. smell nice. <laughs> so we're just waiting for this, and this is a good way to know if it's warm, mm -hmm. feels nice and toasty. I'm gonna look at our comments. Yeah, sure. Ah, oh, I feel that nice heat. What's also nice about avocado oil, it has a beautiful um, profile in terms of saturated, unsaturated fats. It's very heart healthy oil, so good for your HDL. Yeah, high in monounsaturated, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's very neutral. So I want the flavor to come from the spices. I don't necessarily want the olive oil flavor here. Maybe mm -hmm. other things, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some onion. Awesome. So why don't you go ahead and toss the onion in there. So exciting. <laughs> And you know the you know the pan is ready because it's sizzling. That's right. Ah. You can hear it. So I actually don't like to listen to music when I'm uh, cooking because I like the sounds. Mm. For me, I love the sounds of the kitchen. It's really nice and enjoyable. So mm. I know my pan's nice. ready. So why don't you go ahead and just let these onions get a little soft, and I'm going to have you hit this with your flavor. Oh. You're going to hit this with some. Some paprika and some chili powder, and that's going to develop a great flavor. Oh, I thought you were like, I should spit some rhymes uh, at yeah. it. Okay. Yo, you want to hit with the flavor, you onion booch? I see, I said booch because it's kid, <laughs> it's kid friendly. Uh, all right, so sorry. <laughs> it's very inspiring, you know, cooking and rhyming, cooking. It and is, rhyming. it is. Rhyming and stealing. Rhyming and stealing in a drunken <laughs> state. I'll be stirring these onions all the way to hell's gate. Most and ever gonna food got a meal, and we're gonna put it on the plate. What? You see that? <laughs> drop, drop what? the spatula. <laughs> Thug light. Thug light. Uh, all right. What do we do? So see how they're changing yeah, color yeah, a little yeah. bit. It's feeling a little toasty for me, so we're gonna turn it down just a smidge. We're gonna mm -hmm. check out the. Uh, let's see. There it down. Is. Just yeah. a smidge. Beautiful stuff. So see, we're getting a little brown, which is fine, fine, fine. We're not gonna panic. So uh, I'm just gonna pop in some spice. So I love it. Let's see, we have smoked paprika. Look at that oh, color, look at that. people. And um, if you have an old spice cabinet, go ahead and give your spice a smell. If it smells like dust, it probably will taste like dust. Um, Replace it, it's okay. Man, that's gorgeous. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, so stir that up. Uh, here's a quiz. I'm sure your people in your audience will know, why did I not put the garlic in yet? Ooh, uh, does the garlic burn? Yes. Ah. Garlic cooks much faster than onion, so I'm gonna get my onion nice and soft, and then at the end, I'm gonna hit it with garlic, and then we're gonna add all these beautiful things. That's lovely. So these okay. guys have watched me grill, but otherwise yeah. I don't cook. I don't even know what I'm doing. This is great. Yeah. Ooh, look at so that. So let's smell it. it. Smells great. 
Oh man! Oh man! Yeah, this is smell good, man, huh? Man, that's like imagine the best barbecue sauce you've ever had in your life. Yeah. And then multiply it by twelve, and that's what it smells that's like. That's what it smells like. I'm, you know, because we have our cauliflower and all of other stuff going in, I'm not going to be shy. I'm just going to add a little more. And notice I'm not measuring. Yeah, you're just. This to taste. Just going you know, commando. Yeah. Yeah, going commando. And again, I find the smoked paprika for kids has a nice smokiness and it's not overly spicy. The chili powder is what's gonna give it the kick. So I sometimes will hold back a little bit on that and if I wanna do, you know, you can always do spice at the table. Got it. So that's Got a it. way to make it friendly for everyone. All right, we're ready for our garlic. Julia, can you reintroduce yeah. the spices for the oh, audience? Yeah, sure, yep. So this is just a regular chili powder and this is from, I feel like a Rancho Gordo saleswoman. Hey man, we'll make them pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a sponsored post, but this is not one of them. So, but this is just chili powder and it's just dried chili and you can get this anywhere, but just make sure it's fresh. So go ahead and smell it. If it smells good, feel free. All right, give that a stir. And All this right, is garlic. Mm -hmm. This is smoked paprika, which I love. I use this, you know, for roasting vegetables. You're saying you like to use that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really beautiful. It adds a lot of color. Do the brands matter? No. No. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love this company, and I just, again, it's really just important that it's fresh. Yeah. If you have a spice store in your area, go. Mm. Ask the people if you know nothing about spices. What check out, yeah. check uh, out our spice rack. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's so it's beautiful and they're all outdated and old. Yeah. So uh, they need to be updated. All yeah. right. So we're gonna put our cauliflower in now that our um, onion is ready. So if you think about this, what I always try to do with families, and again, I don't believe one size fits all, not, every, not one diet works for everyone. Mm. But I can say pretty unequivocally that almost everybody could be eating more vegetables, especially our kids. And we just have to find ways to make them appealing and delicious. I mean, if vegetables are as dope as this, yeah. even I would eat them. Right? Yeah. It smells great, doesn't it? Smell it smells amazing. And so, there are other, you know, if, if you like the cauliflower really soft, you can um, take some time to blanch it first. But in this preparation, I just think a little bit of cooking time is going to be awesome. Mm. So, what we're going to do is, so get this nice and coated with all of our herbs. We're gonna add in, these are canned tomatoes and canned black beans. You can, of course, use fresh when you can, but these are stock pantry items for me. I always have beautiful, and uh, you know, organic, you can make an argument either way for, you know, should you buy everything organic, but I like the flavor of the organic tomatoes. I think they're freshly picked, they're beautiful. So, of course, when I have fresh tomatoes, I use them, but in this case, so what I'm gonna do is take these canned tomatoes with their juice, so that juice is actually gonna help cook this down, it's gonna help soften that cauliflower. And then I'm gonna add some beans, and I think that's another thing that we really underestimate the importance of beans. And when you put them in something familiar, it's not overwhelming. Man, that looks really good. Yeah, so some people are like, oh, my kids won't eat beans. But if you put this, and especially if you put this in a taco shell, Nobody's going to object to the bean component and the fiber, you know, all so good. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it some time. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit. So the moisture is going to help cook the cauliflower. We've got this beautiful, we're just going to let it go. That wasn't that hard, right? That was a piece of cake. Yeah. So what I think we should do is we'll pick up all these things and um, do you want to show we're gonna make a, you can put these certainly in shells you could put these in tortillas but why not pop them in a beautiful piece of lettuce I mean that's awesome any more vegetables is good in my book I love it so right. I'm getting really hungry looking at this and I'm supposed to eat one meal a day which is dinner I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna hold out all right so let's throw some garnish down we can do it over Garnish. here. Garnish! Okay. Absolutely, here. yeah. While we're, she, right. she can grab that. Let's see if there's any. Is? Oh, yeah, very slippery because yeah. you don't have your thing. All right, so we're going to redo that. Put that there. Yep. Nice. And this is nice. And whatever, this space is beautiful to really include your kids. Mm. And even if your kids don't love to cook, say, hey, come over. What do you think? How does that smell to you? Does that taste good? Can you be my taster tonight? Always include them. Yeah. They don't have to love them. Though. Uh, yeah, mine, mine love that stuff, actually. Uh, <laughs> my kid took a class at, like, Sur La Table or something in Las Vegas, 
and learn to bake and like is super into cooking. So getting them involved, I think, is exactly right because it then becomes this collaborative thing and it gets them off their devices, which is like 90% of the battle these days, right? What's your policy on devices <coughs> as a pediatrician? Well, uh, it you just have to set limits. Mm. You just have to time box it. It's just impossible for these kids to manage on their own. Yeah. My first rule was if they wanted to have a phone, they had to learn to make 10 dishes. Oh, wow. We'll cook for foam. Right, I like that. Yeah. I want you to go ahead and grate this carrot. Oh dear, okay. Here you go. Grate the carrot. All right, let's see if I know what I'm doing. The coarse grating here? <coughs> yeah, okay. Ooh. This is fun. Although I just imagine this is my finger because with my dexterity, that's why I'm a hospitalist and not a surgeon, I would just grate my finger right down to the nub before I even felt anything. And then we'd have this delicious, very nutritious finger salad. Hey Z, can you tell the audience again what was placed under the board? So under the board is a, is a paper towel that's slightly moist and it provides um, enough friction that you don't, um, you don't slide the cutting board all around. It's very, very awesome because Julia was saying that when the board starts sliding, you're more likely to cut yourself, you're more likely to you know, send pieces flying everywhere. Uh, and so this is much better. There's quite a few tips in this little podcast. Like I'm like, oh wow, now I know how to cut an onion and garlic and how to um, actually make this amazing cauliflower tacos. We're almost even done with that piece of it because it's that easy to do. Smoked paprika, Rancho Gordo, chili powder. It's too much fun. Any other, uh, any other good comments there? Let's take a look. Leslie uh, Goody says, we grew our veg when we lived in Oregon. My children eat all veg and they love them. Fresh vegetables that you grow yourself, it's very hard not to love them, right? So kids automatically are inclined to want to um, eat that. Did I make too much? The whole carrot? Oh, uh, that's awesome. Are you dying over there? Did you no, aspirate? I'm okay. I'm okay. We might have made her aspirate. Mm. In which case, she's going to uh, go from pediatrics to my world, which is nursing home. That's right. Peg and trach. No way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got your advanced directive set up? I do, I do, yeah. Good. Just in case, Me just too. In case I aspirated the dogs. Mm hmm. Okay. It's happened. It wouldn't be the first time. This smells so good. Oh, it smells fantastic. You can see, like, and, and the other thing about being a doctor who talks a lot about food is I have to be clear, this is not about deprivation. This is not about restriction. This is about enjoying food. All right. Is that Beautiful. enough? Yeah. So how do you feel about um, a little cabbage? Good job. Boy, <laughs> look at this. Do you want to just move this to the side? I want you to get your knife out again. We'll do your last knife hurrah. Yep. And so see this beautiful carrot. I also make a lot of carrot salad and you can find your lonely carrot. Sorry, knife back. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you do in school. You say sharp behind. Sharp, yep. Knife sharp back. Behind, yep. Yep. So you were saying about the cabbage? Yep, just give it, it's, and it's so hearty. It lasts forever. So mm. this is a great thing to have. So claw hand and we're, how yeah, we cut it? Yeah, so you can cut it a few different ways, but you really don't need much. So you can just start by, um, we'll make an even smaller wedge. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on, let me just wipe the cauliflower off this. Ooh, it's like cabbage dandruff, you know? Yeah. Like head and shoulders. It's everywhere. Okay, so then what you want to do is just, you can take your knife, zip, zip. Mm, okay. that's, that's an official term. So claw, claw hand. <laughs> claw and, hand, and yeah, just run your knife. Right there. Nice. Oh, dude, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Let me just... I still have trouble getting that swing of that. Yeah. The It'll back come. of that. Don't forget, do your claw hand. Do the claw hand. Yeah, there you go. Don't lose the fingers. Yeah. And it's a, it's a leverage thing too, so if That's I'm closer, right. yep. I'm better. Exactly. You want that knife, it's gotta be an extension of your arm. That's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, we used to make, uh, we used to grow cherry tomatoes and cucumbers, and still I'll never forget like that flavor of an amazing. So wonderful. Amazing tomato. Yeah. Oh, so what you want to notice here is that often when I'm cooking, I have, I'm thinking about the next meal because it's going to come, you know, I'm going to get hungry. So I always put some containers aside. So what I might do when I am plating is plate my lunch for the next day. Mm. And I've got that ready to roll for me. Because mm. this is beautiful just eating with a spoon. Yeah, yeah. So you can just scoop it out. 
And then you, you know, you put it in the team room, in the refrigerator, and it says Julia on yeah, it. And what happens? And some punk comes up and eats it. And you're like, hey, punk, is your name Julia? I didn't I think, think so. so. Which means I've learned not only to chop, but I've learned to stab. Okay, stab to, to maim, not to kill, but to maim if you eat my food out of the team room refrigerator. That's all I'm saying. All right, this would be all great right. for a potluck too, right? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I do these, um, I got in trouble with my neighbor because I brought over a big crock pot full of this. Mm. And she's like, oh, now you know what I'm here? I love Julia's tacos. I love tacos. Can Julia make tacos? I don't love your tacos anymore. <laughs> That's what happens, That's man. Right. It's, a, it's, a, right. it's a kind of a war game you gotta play. So probably at home I might let this cook a little more and cook some of the crunch out of the cauliflower. Mm. It's very what, one thing I love about this recipe. It's super forgiving. Mm -hmm. you, you need to take a call. You need to step away for a moment. You want to make a, a side salad. It will sit here and behave nicely for you ah. while you're waiting, which is really important. All right, mm -hmm. but I think we should really show the audience how it can look. Oh, let's do it. it yeah, it's right. exciting. So we got a good shot here, Victoria. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, so we're gonna turn this off. And do you wanna, I, oh, sorry, do you wanna take a break and I can man the camera here? Yeah. Your arm's probably getting tired. Yeah. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna um, explore Z Dog's kitchen and find myself a nice serving. Oh, there you go. Careful. Don't you don't don't find any of the legal marijuana. <laughs> I keep that in the special spice cabinet. Okay. There we go. So I'm just gonna bring this close to where I'm serving. I've got. I like this bib lettuce. I just think it's nice and fun. And don't forget, you can do this with any kind of flavor profile. You can do this with ground tofu and some poisson sauce. You can make it Asian. It can have an Indian profile. It's all in how you flavor the canvas. So we're going to take um, some of our mixture. I'm going to put it right in there. Look at this. is all vegetables. Man, that looks so good. It's appealing, right? It's pretty. It's got a lot of color to it. Right. And if you guys could smell this, y'all oh. would be like, oh, snap. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Snap, snap. Snap. All right. And so then we're just going to make it beautiful. And any opportunity to add more vegetable, we're doing it. So we got a little carrot on top. I love grated carrot. I'll pop this into a soup, make a salad of it on my own. There we go. Pretty, pretty. And a little snap of that purple cabbage. So Jody Chance says she has 15 pounds of eggplant she just oh. harvested. Gonna make it a bunch of baba ganoush and nice. caponata and freeze it, right? Oh my God, I'm, I'm coming over in a second. <laughs> I love that and it's so true. You just gotta learn to use what is plentiful. Yep. Use what's plentiful and available to you. All right. Ooh. I would say we got some beautiful, vibrant, colored, vegetarian cauliflower tacos. That looks really, really good. Hashtag winning. Hashtag winning. winning. Hashtag suck it vegans. Yeah. We're better <laughs> than you. We're better than you right here. So I do want to say about eating together. Yes. This is our opportunity. You know, we're both working people. We both have dynamic careers. We both have things to add to our children. And one of the things that I see a lot in clinic is I'll say to kids, hey, what, what's up with your folks? What do they do? What are they like? And kids are really disconnected from that. Ah. And this is our time when we sit and eat. Hey, how was your day? What was frustrating to you today? What was awesome? What, is, like, what moment were you curious about today? This is our time to talk with our kids and to nourish them and to love them and to show them that we care about them a lot more than we care, they care, than we care about our phones. Mm. They will follow in turn. Mm. So I really want to impart cook for the people you love and talk to them while you eat. That, that, and when Ron and I were talking, we were saying the same thing. Dinner is your time yeah. to be together, disconnect from the crap outside and connect yeah. to the people in front of you. And yeah. it doesn't have to be an hour, five minutes of eyeballs. Mm. And that's what kids are yearning for. You know, mm. kids are hungry for nourishing food. They don't want to be fed crap food. They don't want to be ignored at dinner. They do need us and as parents and as humans and as people. So the more that we can do that, the better. I love that. That's a beautiful summary of why to do this. Also, it was easy. It was fun. It's delicious. Dr. Ju, let's just, just I know, yeah. <laughs> Look at super this. pretty. Can I taste one? Of course, okay. yeah, let's taste right, one. Let's yeah. taste one here. Should we do a little taste? Yes. Test? Let's move. All right. And we got, okay, while you're doing that, come up comments? with questions. If you have any questions, yeah. hit us up now because now's the time. Well, they want to know if you'll post the recipe. Yes. Yes, we'll post Absolutely. it and I'll post a link to the book and all the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So this is in your book as well? Yes, it is. Oh, it's going to be messy. Oh, but that's right. cool. Okay, we'll eat it right that's cool. I'll let you go first. All right. I'm going to dive in. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's good, right? Drop the spatula. Dude. Drop the mic. Drop it all. Dude. Okay. Right? I thought, okay, it smells amazing. It looked amazing. I'm like, it's gonna taste like crap. Because <laughs> that's how it's, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. No way, man. That is so freaking good, you guys. Like, I'm not even kidding. And I hate vegetables. That is you delicious. Do? Well, no, 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 I don't. I, I love vegetables, but I love them with meat. And mm -hmm. this without any meat. You don't miss it, right? Not at all. Yeah. It, it has a fullness and a richness and a complexity. You can chop um, mushrooms in there. You can yeah. chop, um, you can put eggplant in there. It, it, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good, you guys. Like, I wish you could have this with yeah. me. Um, Simple and, and how expensive is this? It's so cheap. Not, not expensive. Each yeah. head of cauliflower is $2.99. Dude. I mean, you can't get a packet of meat for $2.99. No, no, no. You, well, you can, but it won't be oh, good. Yeah, yeah, you don't want <laughs> yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Uh, USDA grade G. Yeah, um, bad. Let's see. So, uh, I love that lettuce was used for a shell. I wouldn't have thought of that on my own. Yeah. And what kind of lettuce? Is it butter lettuce? Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. butter lettuce or bib lettuce or Boston lettuce. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. Kids love it. Yeah, it's it, it's really good. Now you could put an actual taco shell around. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. You could also do a tortilla if you like. Um, and I don't. A soft taco. Yeah, if you want a soft taco or if you want a crispy corn shell. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful and full of vegetables mm -hmm. that um, whatever works, whatever works. But I love and, people, and the kids love it. It's fun. Man, <laughs> and so you're saying you can take a bag of this. Put it in a little container yeah. or a thermos. Oh yeah, totally. Like this is gonna be my. This is. I would just put this in here, and I would put here. But let's do that. Where's the little container? Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'd be like, all right, I'm having. I'm working tomorrow. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to eat. I'm gonna pack myself some of this, and then I would look around and say, all right, oh, what's left over? Oh, I'm gonna put a bunch of lettuce. Oh. I mean, there we go. Oh, so it's almost like a salad yeah. mixed yeah. with the main course at once. Yeah, and then I could squeeze. Oh, I forgot the lime. We could squeeze a little lime juice on there. Um, but that's a beautiful lunch for myself. I'll eat that any time of day. You can keep talking. <laughs> mm, we gotta let Victoria eat this. Yeah. All right, here we go. That's it. Actually. People were asking about your book as well. Oh, yes, my book. Hang on. We're gonna flip this around. And we're gonna give Victoria a break. Okay, Julia. Yes. The book. The book. Grab that because you guys like, look, I'm a skeptic about this yeah. stuff. Oh, hey, look, this is a very similar look. This is a different recipe on the cover. This is um, hoisin and tofu. Four ingredients, very inexpensive. But my book is The New Family Table, and it really is very basic recipes, things you can do, things that kids will like, not fussy, not expensive, just really about making it happen. Exactly, just how do you get around DoorDash? How do you make what you can do more delicious and simple and better? That's the book. Guys, Simple. like, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of show, because I love it. Like, I'm learning <laughs> stuff. Like, I have tools I can use. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys learn something. And His wife is going to be psyched. You hear that, woman? <laughs> and the, It's all for you, sister. <laughs> and, and these are medical professionals. Dr. Julia Nordgren yeah. is a pediatrician, a mother, an author, and a trained chef. Damn. And this is part of the reason why I moved back to the Bay so we could get really cool yeah. old colleagues of mine from where we used to work and get together, do a show. And I would love if you, if you guys could share this, if you want to support the show. Because Freaking love it, yeah. That's right, Deb Sia. <laughs> Brittany Bolden Brittany, is like, oh, I missed, missed it. Missed Brittany, it. you got to watch it on the replay, girl. Yeah, watch it on I the replay. I put it up on YouTube. It's here on Facebook. It's going to be the on our again, website. The name again, please. The name again is The New Family Table. And in fact... It's backwards because we're on oh, mirror backwards? mode, but that's oh, okay. okay. That's okay because we showed it in the beginning. We'll show it. Well, I'll put a link. Oh, to can all I show it. a little bit of a oh, quick yeah, thing yeah, about yeah, my yeah. book that I did? So Here. this isn't like any medical advice, but what I did is I took five se sections to do things of questions that I get a lot mm -hmm. from people. So, and then I put them in what's called all about sections. Mm. So this, for example, that's all about grains. Uh, so we hear about these things like whole grains versus refined grains. How do you pick a grain? What is good in a grain? Can, can I see that? Yeah. So, so let me read a passage because this is 
very helpful. So a refined or processed grain typically has the bran and the germ removed. What's left is the fluffy starchy element. So whole wheat is refined into white flour. White flour is what's used in breads and cereals and pasta. So this is very helpful. So the problem is these processed grains are the simple carbohydrates that tend to drive health problems like weight gain and diabetes. Couldn't have said that better. That's amazing. Yeah, and so this is just, again, it's not personalized medical advice, but this is very general stuff. And um, let me also say, well, okay, so in all about sweeteners, I get a lot of questions about this. So how do you use sweeteners and how do sweeteners that you use at home in mm. your cooking, how does that differ from the high fructose corn syrup that you're going to get in your boba tea, for right, example? Right, right, so right, how, right. Do, how are these different and how do you utilize these and from a culinary perspective? Mm -hmm. And the other thing is I, I do include desserts. Because, yeah. you know, life is delicious and life should be enjoyed and especially on birthdays and celebrations. So um, my son, if he could eat what he wanted to all day, he would eat Skittles. <laughs> so, of Sounds course, like I, can't, yeah, I can't give him Skittles all day. But when I said to him, uh, what, do you, what kind of cake do you want for your birthday? And he said, um, I want a Skittles cake. Oh, show me this. I was like, what? That sounds it's, disgusting. It's Is it? so disgusting. Ah. It's so disgusting, but he loves it. And for me to make a cake of the ingredients that he likes on mm. his birthday, mm. that's money that's right there. That's what it is. Let's so see here's it. the Skittles cake. Oh, let's see if we can show this. I put oh, the Skittles wow. inside. It's so gross. I don't, and I, I even say, I can't even pretend to like this cake. It's wildly <laughs> sweet and packed with unhealthy ingredients. But it, when it is my Skittles-obsessed son Ben's birthday, this cake is it. Can we see it again? Yeah. Let's just get a good close-up of that. That is horrific looking and it's yet horrific. and yet and yet i want it right well um, i want to say like it's about how to find balance in your life and i do this wait wait oh, look at this picture we got of him oh he's <laughs> eating it that's adorable look at that you got the that stethoscope him, no that lets him know that i love him through food and the way I love him through food mostly is by making him a beautiful breakfast, steel cut oats, making him a gorgeous lunch. He's got lots of fruits and vegetables, great sandwich in his lunch, making him dinner full of fruits and vegetables. And then on his birthday, I'm gonna throw down the cake that is gonna rock his world. And this that's is, how I'm gonna do it. This is very different than those schoolhouse rock uh, PSAs that used to happen when I was a kid in the 80s. Because there, there'd be like a chubby kid and he'd be like, a bug in my eye will get me some pie. Whenever I'm hurt, mom gives me dessert. You know, some love will work yeah. wonders without adding weight. So they were basically saying, don't give your kids food to like console them. Yeah. This is very different. This is giving very them different. food to connect with them. No. And it's generally healthy, except and for the Skittles cake. Yeah, except for the Skittles cake. And the snacks, and I, I talk about bridging the gap, because we all like we always have that gap between lunch and dinner, and how to manage that is really important in how you deal with mm. dinner and in, in your sugar. And so these are very simple. These are nuts. These are fruits. This is, these are not elaborate recipes, but they're ideas for how do we get away from the boxes, the packages, and how do we really give kids and ourselves what we need. I mean, this is just apples and peanut butter, but it's beautiful and it's appealing. I talked to somebody yesterday who had never made their own popcorn. Oh, wow. So, so you make it in a pan? And... Yeah, just make it in a pan. Pop your own. So inexpensive, super crunchy, tons of fiber. Mm -hmm. Pop a little salt on there. It's delicious. And none of that like weird stuff they put in in the oh, movie the theater corn. Oh, God, and the spray chemicals oh, yeah. of the... Um, uh, the butane that they spray in the microwave popcorn. That's a little scary. It's anyway. Still, it's delicious, though. But I really, I, I genuinely think that this book is full of good information for families. And if you get one or two things out of it, then, then my job is, I love is it. done. So guys, uh, I, she, <laughs> Julia has been, Dr. Norgren, if you're nasty, <laughs> has been so generous with her time, with her knowledge that has been hard won, and with her genuine compassion for the suffering of fellow human beings who are trying to live and cook and love their children without... Uh, falling apart and we all and you know what I love about the title of this cooking more and eating together and staying Relatively <laughs> sane. It's not a magic bullet for anything, no. but it's part of a toolkit yeah. that we can use So guys, I love it. Let's give it up for dr. Julia Thank and... you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, you did awesome. Oh, I, I didn't awesome. I didn't lose a finger and I thought that would get us more beer. I know they're all here. The, most, the thumb is gone, but yeah, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Thanks it's again so for fun. everything guys if you want more of this, hit like, hit yeah. share, and we Mwah. out.